Hey guys, it's Reed. Today we're going to show you how to make a histogram using Excel 2016 and the data analysis tool pack. So the data set we're using is National League Baseball salaries from 2005 that we got from USA Today. I'll put this link in the video description. So from our data, I've already gone through, made a back above it, and did a basic cleanup. If you want more information on those steps, check out our other videos. Um, but as an overview of our data, we have about 440 lines, and we want to make a histogram showing how many uh, baseball players have salaries in different ranges. The first thing I do when I'm making a histogram is I hide the middle of my data. And the reason for this is because the data analysis tool pack is an older tool and it has some weird features and if you have less data to scroll through I find it makes my life easier. Uh, once we have all of our data hidden and we have a manageable portion to work with, uh, the next thing we're going to do is go into the data tab up here and use the data analysis tool pack. If you don't have the data analysis tool pack installed on your computer, we have another video that will show you how to do that. So. Before we make our histogram, I like to use some descriptive statistics to get an overview of the data so I have a better idea of what I'm working with and it will help me create the bins for the histogram. So we'll select descriptive statistics and press OK. Our input range is going to be these salaries. And with the hidden data, even though I've simply selected seven uh, boxes here, you can see from our uh, tab that we're going from 1 to 440. So we have all the data, including what's hidden. I'm going to select labels in first row because I have C1 here and salary is in C1. And this will just give me a nicer title for my descriptive statistics. For my output range, I'm going to put it on the same sheet as our data. And that's because I like to see this and it also will make our histogram a bit easier once we're creating bins. Uh, finally, we're going to check the box for summary statistics and the confidence level for the mean. And then we'll press OK. So what we have here is our mean, our standard deviation, range, minimum, and maximum. These are the four or five fields that are going to kind of help us decide how many bins we have in our histogram. So, as you can see, our mean, if we go here and make it into dollars, is 2 million. Our standard deviation is uh, 3.5 million. And our salaries range from 300,000 to 22 million. So, what this tells me is 67% of our salaries are going to be in the range from uh, 300,000 to about 6 million. And there are some salaries up in the 21 to 22 million dollar range that are significant outliers. So the next thing we're going to do is make our bins. I think about 10 bins would be sufficient for this. and. Uh, we're going to follow our general rules for bins, including that we want to encompass all of our data and they need to be equally spaced. So the way I do this is I'm going to make a column called initial bins. And the first value in here will be our minimum of 300,000. So when I'm making bins, what I do is I'm going to make a formula here and we'll put equals our range divided how, by however many bins we want. I'm going to say 10 and then we'll add to this the box above. So now I'm going to pull down and make 10 bins. And if we double click here, we'll be able to expand our field. 
and what we did wrong there is I forgot to fix uh, the range when I made my formula. So what we actually want to do is put the equal sign again, select our range, and press F4. And what this does is it locks our range, so when I drag down, uh, it'll stay at that range number. And we'll do the same formula again. So now, if we pull down, and again increase our field, you can see that in these 10 boxes, we go from 2.4 million to 22 million. And what I'm going to do is copy this and paste it in this row, and we're going to paste values. Again, we'll double click to make sure we have our full field, and now we can label this bins. Now the reason I do this copy and paste is because if we leave our initial bin at the minimum, uh, what's going to happen is our first bin will simply count all those values that are in uh, exactly 300,000. And that's because we've selected our minimum and we know there aren't any values below that based on our descriptive statistics. So once we have our bins defined, what I'm going to do is go back to data and we're going to use our data analysis tool pack to make our histogram. So we'll select histogram in the list and then press OK. Now our input range, again, is going to be the salary field, including the label salary. And our bin range will be these bins that we just created by pasting our values. Now we're going to select labels because in both cases we've selected the label in our fields. And I like to have this be output on our same sheet and that's just personal preference. If you want to put it on a different sheet, you can feel free. I'll select the field right above, uh, or right next to our label bins. And I'm going to have the data analysis tool pack give me a cumulative percentage and chart output. Uh, the chart output is going to actually give us the histogram we're desiring. And I just find cumulative percentage to be useful in these sort of uh, analyses. So I'll press OK, and Excel will do the work for me, and go through, create our bins, tell me how many players are making salaries within that bin, and create the histogram. So let's again make these into dollar bills, into currency, and we will make sure that our other two fields are appropriately uh, wide so we can see the numbers in there. Now you can see here Excel went through and gave us the more label and uh, in some cases that'd be useful but because we set our maximum here to match our maximum there uh, we're not going to have any values uh, in this greater than label so I'm going to simply delete it. Okay so now the final thing I'm going to do is give my bins uh, more informative labels. And because the data analysis tool pack will give us static values, um, this is possible. So I am going to first dollar sign zero through 247,000. And then we can uh, just work our way up. And again, we're going to expand our field so we can actually see all the data we have.
and uh, the reason we're doing this is because a bin is an encompassing region. It's not simply values at the ease, uh, at the exact value that was put out here. So I just think this is slightly more useful. Um, in some cases, you might not need to do this, but I uh, prefer histograms t to show me exactly what I'm looking at. So. And our final one. Alrighty. So, now let's go use this to make a good looking histogram. So the first thing I'm going to do is expand this so it takes up a greater portion of my field. And if you remember math class from high school, a uh, histogram is different from our bar graph because in a histogram the bars touch. And the reason for that is again the same reason I added in the um, first value that is making up our bin and it's because a histogram is showing all the values within a bin not simply a static number at the end. So the way we're going to do this is over here we'll first double click on one of our columns and then we can drag gap width down to zero. Um, because there are so few values up at these higher levels, uh, you kind of see how it's pretty small there. And unfortunately, that's a side effect of the number of bins I chose. Um, like we could tell from our uh, standard deviation, most of the values are going to be down these lower areas. So the final thing I'm going to do is uh, just give our histogram a better title. And down here, we'll give this a more informative title. Okay, so now, as you can see, we have a completed histogram. And this is something that you could then paste into an infographic if you were doing something like that on the National Baseball League. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to text and comment, and a link to this data will be provided in the description to the video. Thanks!